This was a case of a, a traumatic cataract, very dense, and, and long stand it. it. It was there for um, uh, almost 20 years with an inferior orthogonal dialysis and inferior eyes loss because of the trauma. So now I'm performing the capsule of Rexis and unfortunately I didn't use uh, any dye because I was uh, concerned about the dye migration into the uh, vitreous space. But uh, I had trouble doing the capsule of Rexis because I could not see it properly. Anyway, I managed to perform it and after performing the, the uh, lens removal with uh, stop and chop, I uh, rehydrate and uh, remove the, the cortex remnants. As you can see, the, I'm holding the bag with these iris hooks because I lack uh, capsular hooks. And the last part of the cortex is very attached to the capsule, so I decided to implant a CTR. As you can see, it goes uh, to, the, uh, to the end of the capsular bag, and you can see it inferiorly. And now I can remove uh, the, the cortex remnants without uh, uh, any problem to the, to the thonula. Now I'm trying to enlarge the capsule of Rexis, but in the in with this movement I just lost the the capsule of Rexis. I, I cut it and I implanted the, the lens into the capsular uh, back remnants because the anterior capsule was open inferiorly. You can see during the uh, removal of the viscoelastic the movement of the capsular remnants, and I thought it was stable, but it was not stable because of the stretching of the CTR. It opened the inferior gap and the IOL migrated into the vitreous cavity. You can see the large trauma to the retina that had after the, the ocular trauma and performing the vitreotomy. You can see the, the nuclear uh, remnants. When you do FACO with these cases with sonoral dialysis, there is always uh, remnants into the vitreous cavity. Now I'm moving the lens, cutting it by half and in two halves. And, and after this, I'm uh, removing also uh, the, the remnants of the vitreous in the periphery and also the uh, capsular tension ring. You need to do it uh, very gently to avoid any trauma to the retina using other forces as a fulcrum. And now I'm removing the, the capsular remnants. As you can see, not only there are all fragments when you do these cutters, but also the, the, the bag is not completely clean and they are bound to, to contract afterwards. So I'm removing the capsular bag and uh, in this case I'm doing the Yamani technique with the Brian Kim modification. I'm implanting this uh, IOL, Thais Lucia, TT202 and now I'm um, uh, taking out the, 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 the superior optic and then the inferior one. Uh, creating long tunnels with the 27G uh, needle. So first I take out one of the optics and then the second one, the, the inferior one, which is easier to, to take out than the superior one. And once they are out, I categorize the tips and bury them into the uh, this uh, uh, two millimeter scleral uh, tunnels I created. And now, uh, in this case, I am sure that the lens is stable, so I'm going to, to fix the, the iris uh, defect with the sipster uh, uh, suture. The problem with the sipster is you can get engaged into the sclera, so I pass the, the needle through the gap of the ILM forceps, and I also use the ILM forceps to recover the, the, the loop of the 10 o nylon to, to do the, the knot. And I'm uh, suturing the, the iris and closing the gap very gently, uh, paying attention for the periphery of the iris not to uh, create an iridodo an irido dialysis. So now I'm uh, fixing the, the suture and cutting the, 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 the suture again, and now I'm doing another stitch. And uh, fortunately, I could fix this case in which I made a mistake in the in the first uh, surgery.